Greetings, people of intellect. This is my book review of The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, who is an author that is known to write the blunt truths. And this book I would consider as the book of dark arts because it reveals some of the most heinous truths about societies that we kind of don't talk about or push under the rug. Truths that we deem that we evolved out of from the medieval ages into this much more civilized society, but yet these same principles are still being used whether we like to admit them or not, whether we're conscious of them or not. And this book, although it's directed in a way to as an instructional guide of how to implement these laws, you can still absorb the material to guard yourself against these uh, manipulations and power plays that, that those that uh, ascend to a level of power through, through heinous acts use. So, this, this is a really, really dark book, obviously, but more so, I just, I'm troubled by how truthful it is and how, how indirectly they can be because I, I consider myself a really conscious person of my surroundings and whatnot, and, and as I went through the chapters, which, which by the way, I love the way he lays it out, like he introduces one law in every chapter, he explains the law and, and then he gives a really wonderful example uh, and the implications of what happens when you do follow or don't follow this law. And so going through that, I realized the, the times that it was that I was upon and, and I was just like, wow. Um, so it, it, it does to some level make you paranoid about uh, certain aspects of society but more so it's just nice to be aware of them than to mindlessly be upon in, in, the, in the grand scheme of someone else's dark plans. So the three main concepts that I took away from, from this uh, wonderful and very revealing book is first how to have the master serve the slave how to be more cunning, be more intelligent in every conceivable way, but not to appear so. To disguise your intelligence, to disguise your intentions, and, and get what you desire by appearing meek, by appearing uh, as though you could not possibly conceive such things. So that's, that's one thing that uh, um, a lot of the examples in, in the book he uses um, demonstrates over and over uh, whether it be uh, Cleopatra or or the um, the ones that uh, ascended to the throne by um, by like the the secretaries or the the right hand man of the um, popes and and the kings that ultimately got to achieve their plans by slightly hinting at things and and and, and being more cunning than the uh, the the apparent uh, ruler. The second concept that I took away, which, which really relates to me, is the concept of independence and isolation can, can serve as a weakness, not a strength. And he gives the example of a fortress, which you build to guard yourself against the outside, which he says if, um, that, that such an isolation can become a prison, not a fortress. Uh, and, and so in that way, if you build walls of isolation around you when you are in need, uh, they may become your prison. So that's something that uh, I have to give a lot of thought to because I, I deemed that self-sufficiency was, uh, was, was a good thing, was the route that, that one should uh, aim for. But yet, it, it, it has its downfalls, which he, which he revealed really well. The third concept that I took away is the concept of having others play the cards or the options uh, that you've given them. So basically uh, creating the illusion of choice, um, dealing them the cards that of which all of them are, are paths that you um, have given them but they don't perceive it as so. So it's, it's a really, really dark book, but overall it gives one the strengths uh, as well as the weaknesses of finding um, holds in, in other people's tactic to control you and gain power through you.